A woman wakes up in the middle of the night in severe pain. Her ribs have fallen out of place, again. Exhausted, she relocates them and tries to sleep, hoping her ribs would stay put for longer than 10 minutes this time. For seven years, this young woman had been suffering from painful, unexplained issues. It started with her shoulder popping out, but now it's also her jaw, hips, and ribs. Any body part can dislocate without warning. Mystified doctors didn't have any solutions for her, and she had given up hope on ever getting better. Until one night, while watching Grey's Anatomy, she saw her life playing out on the screen. She finally had the answer. She wasn't alone. Let's get into it. Emelie Levy, a 22-year-old young woman from Israel, had a string of concerning health experiences, but she and her doctors were unable to find an explanation. Her wrists and ankles hurt constantly, but there seemed to be no cause, and in her teen years, she experienced multiple dislocations of her shoulders, hips, jaw, and ribs. It was physically painful, but also frustrating to never know why this was happening to her. Then, one day, Emily was shocked to suddenly see her experiences being shown on TV. She was watching the popular medical show, Grey's Anatomy, and a female patient was admitted after collapsing. She said she had a hangover after just one drink, and told the doctors to just pop her shoulder back in place as her parents had done multiple times. When asked about other pains, she casually mentioned that she was in constant daily pain. Emily remembered her own experiences of being immediately hung over from only a little bit of alcohol, and her struggle with dislocations in her body, joint pain, and injuries. Captivated, she watched intently for a possible answer to her lifelong medical issues. Before we get into what Emily found out, the Cold War saw technological advancements on a daily basis. But have you ever wondered what it would be like to be at the helm of some of that time's most famous vehicles? Well, this video's sponsor, War Thunder, the most thorough vehicle combat game ever made, has got you covered. The collection of vehicles in War Thunder span over a hundred years of development from the 1920s to the present day, and include over 2,000 authentically rendered tanks, airplanes, helicopters, and ships in enormous combined arms PvP battles. Every vehicle in the game is carefully detailed and modeled down to their individual components offering a highly immersive combat experience. Honestly, it's one of the most dynamic vehicle damage models in gaming. In this game, your tanks don't have measly hit points, your vehicles suffer actual damage to their parts and crew. War Thunder even shows you an x-ray view so you can see the nitty gritty of vehicle combat for yourself. Play now on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and even previous console generations. My favorite vehicle is the A-10 Warthog, and I was excited to see that I could fly it in War Thunder. I like it because it's barely a plane, and when it shoots its big gun, it sounds like a god is farting somewhere. <laughs> War Thunder is gifting a massive free bonus pack for registering through our link, full of premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters, and much more. Click our link in the description box to play War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox today. Captivated, she watched intently for a possible answer to her lifelong medical issues. The woman in the show was diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, a hereditary condition that causes stretchy and fragile skin as well as joints that are overly flexible. Relieved to finally have an answer, Emily went to the doctors to learn more about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, or EDS, but everyone dismissed her. They said her dislocations were due to a different condition called hypermobility syndrome, which leads to very flexible joints that can cause pain. Emily knew in her heart there was more to the story than that, and Finally, armed with some knowledge, she was determined to find the real answer. She sought out a second opinion and was eventually diagnosed with EDS, just like she suspected. Emily is not alone in her experience struggling to get a correct diagnosis. While EDS is very uncommon, patients often endure people not taking their symptoms seriously. In another case involving a young woman, Gabriella, 
She suffered painful dislocations and injuries for years before people really listened to her. Gabriella was a dance major in university. In her first year, doctors found a benign tumor on her vertebrae that required surgery and time off from dance. It was a difficult turn of events, but necessary. Unfortunately, after the surgery, Gabriella never felt fully healed. She felt pain in her neck, and her body didn't feel quite right. But the doctor kept telling her this was normal and that she would be fine. Two years later, Gabriella had a follow-up tumor removal surgery as well as another spine procedure to ease her back pain. But her body still hurt all over. Her knees gave out constantly, and her scars looked wide and unhealed. One day, she saw a video of a girl explaining EDS, and, just like Emily, Gabriella immediately recognized her condition. She told her mom, who dismissed her concerns by telling her not to overreact or worry about it so much. But a year later, Gabriella went back to school to study dance, and her dislocations only got worse. On just her third day back, she was walking to class and her right knee came out of place. The incidents piled up over months, but she continued to brush it off, like her doctor and mother told her to. Then the COVID-19 pandemic struck and Gabriella went to live at home. After seeing it with her own eyes, her mother finally realized what her daughter was going through. Her mom ended up having to constantly put Gabriella's body parts back into place. Even something as simple as taking a bath was almost guaranteed to result in a dislocation. Gabriella couldn't even walk without her legs giving out. And on top of that, she was having gut issues and throwing up most of her meals. For years, Gabriella had tried to keep her head high and live through the pain. As a child, she was easily injured and deep down, she had known something was wrong. After several incidents of passing out as a teenager, she was diagnosed with postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, a condition that affects blood flow. At 17, she dislocated her shoulder for the first time in the middle of an exam and kept going. But the pain was increasing, and it was too much to bear. After going from doctor to doctor for a year and a half, Gabriella finally saw a geneticist who told her she probably had EDS. After that, her life became a string of medical appointments with cardiologists, rheumatologists, and gastroenterologists. She had to give up dance as well as most physical activity and is adjusting to the fact that her life can't be normal. Still, she says she is grateful for the people in her support system who keep cheering her on. So, though a diagnosis is a relief, it's only the beginning of learning how to manage this rare condition. Let's take some time to understand EDS. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome are actually a group of genetic conditions that affect a person's connective tissue, which provides structure and support all over your body. This tissue is in your skin, tendons, ligaments, blood vessels, internal organs, and your bones. There are different types of EDS, but they share similar symptoms across the board, including overly flexible joints, stretchy skin, and delicate skin that is easily injured. 13 different forms of EDS have been identified, with hypermobile EDS and hypermobility spectrum disorders being the most common ones. These types result in loose, easily dislocated joints, joint pain, extreme tiredness, fragile skin, dizziness, and issues with organs, digestion, and bladder control. Hypermobility and its complications occur on a spectrum, with EDS on one end and hypermobility on another. Classical EDS is a less common type that affects the skin more, while it also leads to overly flexible joints and dislocations. An affected person may have stretchy skin, very smooth skin that bruises easily, and skin that splits easily, especially over the forehead, knees, and elbows. They may have wounds that heal very slowly and leave wide scars behind, as well as hernias and organs that slip out of place. One of the most serious types in the spectrum is vascular EDS, found in 1 in 50,000 to 200,000 people. This rare version affects blood vessels and internal organs. Organs can split open and bleed enough to be life-threatening. Symptoms of vascular EDS include easily bruised skin, 
thin skin, visible small blood vessels, fragile blood vessels prone to tearing, organ issues like womb tearing and lung collapses, hypermobile fingers and toes, and facial features like a thin nose and lips, big eyes, and small ears. Other types include periodontal EDS, which specifically affects the gums and teeth, brittle cornea syndrome, a condition that affects the clear layer covering your eye, Spondylodysplastic EDS, which leads to abnormalities in the skeletal structure. Kyphoscoliotic EDS, the main symptom is spine curvature that starts in childhood and gets worse over time. Dermatosporaxis EDS, that includes severe bruising and fragility as well as sagging skin. Arthroclasia EDS, characterized by hip dislocations and extreme hypermobility. Musculocontractual EDS, which affects the muscles and leads to low muscle tone and abnormal joints. Myopathic EDS that leads to muscle atrophy and weakness. Classical-like EDS that doesn't include scarring but shares other signs of classic EDS. Cardiac valvular EDS, a very serious type characterized by issues with heart valves. It was only in March 2017 that the diagnosis of EDS syndromes improved significantly. 90 EDS experts around the world came together to create a cohesive criteria for diagnosis, and 13 types of EDS were identified. The specific gene mutations that cause each one have been confirmed, except for hypermobile EDS, the most common one. EDS syndromes are genetic and passed on from parents to their children. Some types fall into a dominant hereditary pattern, while others are recessive. Dominant inheritance means the EDS type can be passed on by one parent with a 50% chance for each child to develop EDS. With recessive inheritance, the faulty gene must come from both parents, and there is a 25% chance for each of the children to have EDS. Diagnosis includes going over family medical history, a genetic blood test, a physical exam, and a person's symptoms and medical history. Each type of EDS is distinct, so you can't inherit a different type than the one your parent has or have one type turn into another one over time. Many times, like we saw with Emily and Gabriella, children with EDS have mild symptoms that go on for years without being noted. Diagnosis is often a long journey that can take years because the condition is so unknown, and many people are incorrectly diagnosed with fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, and chronic fatigue syndrome. There is no specific treatment or cure for EDS, and most affected people learn how to manage living with the condition. Physiotherapists and occupational therapists can help with strengthening joints, avoiding injuries, managing pain, and advise on daily activities and helpful equipment. Counseling and therapy are also helpful for coping with chronic pain and the complications of the condition. Depending on the form of EDS and severity, some activities will be minimized or avoided, like contact sports and heavy lifting. Protective equipment might be needed for moderately straining activities, and low-risk exercise like swimming or yoga might be encouraged. Pacing, good diet, and sleep habits and self-care are important to maximize quality of life. Now, if you've been listening to this and panicking because you can bend your joints in a funky way, don't jump to any conclusions right away. Joint hypermobility is fairly common and just means some of your joints have a larger range of motion than normal. I don't have any extra flexible joints myself, but what about all of you? Do your fingers or wrists go back extra far? Or can you bend your knees backwards? This is commonly referred to as being double jointed and it's usually seen in the elbows, wrists, fingers, and knees. Most often, hypermobility doesn't cause any pain or complications besides maybe a surprised reaction when you show off your joints to people as a party trick. But for people who are overly flexible and experiencing symptoms like joint pain and injuries, dislocations, tiredness, dizziness, and fainting, thin and stretchy skin, frequent bruising, and bowel issues, this indicates a more serious issue. It's important to consult medical experts quickly before serious injuries occur. EDS is a rare condition with several different types and a range of severity and each case will have unique complications and management. In one severe case, KDD was only 13 when she started having dislocations. She had to go through several unnecessary surgeries because so little was known about EDS that doctors didn't have a clear guideline on how to best help her. Katie had one rib removed as well as three toe knuckles and a spinal surgery. 
She's expected to have three more rib removals and both hips replaced, among other complications. Now that Katie has a diagnosis for hypermobile EDS and arthroclasia EDS, hopefully her path forward only gets better. One more well-known example of EDS is Gary Turner, a UK man who is a Guinness World Record holder. He is the man with the world's stretchiest skin. In 1999, he stretched the skin on his stomach out over 6 inches, or almost 16 centimeters. This wasn't painful for him, though other aspects of his EDS are. Some celebrities have spoken out about living with EDS, including Jamila Jamil, Lena Dunham, Devin Druid, and Shirley Houston, an actor who actually played a character with EDS on the series Coronation Street. Going back to Emily, her complications did not end when she finally got her diagnosis. A year afterward, she was involved in a car accident when another driver fell asleep and crashed into her car. Emily's ribs were dislocated, and only six months later, this led to her chest and thoracic also dislocating. She described it as a domino effect. After her first rib dislocated, her health rapidly got worse every day. Simple tasks like bending over, extending sitting, driving, lifting things, coughing, and even breathing would result in a dislocation. At the worst point, Emily had to wake up every 10 minutes to put her ribs back in place. Desperate, she researched slipping rib syndrome and once again took charge of her own health, eventually flying to Florida to receive treatment at a specialized clinic. Three months later, Emily's health improved drastically and she stopped dislocating. After this life-changing experience, she was inspired to become a doctor to make sure others didn't have to suffer the way she had. In February 2022, Emily finally opened a medical clinic in Israel that focuses on treatment for people with EDS and other orthopedic injuries and pain. Suffering from rare, painful medical conditions like EDS can be confusing and scary. Not very long ago, so little was known about EDS that people like Emily probably never got an answer to their medical mystery. If it wasn't for that TV episode playing at the right time, Emily's journey would have been even longer and more difficult. Who knows when she would have received a diagnosis? We're very lucky to live in a time where information is more readily available and people can more quickly be connected to the information they need. Living with EDS can be very difficult, so it's important to build on information that's been discovered so far and provide tools to manage the condition. Emily's Clinic is one example of a great step forward in helping people with EDS. Remember, click our link in the description box to play War Thunder for free and get a massive free bonus pack today.